Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we have Clayton Bailey. He is back. What did we talk about last time? Do you even remember? Uh, all I remember is the next day you called me and said, I dreamt that I woke up in the middle of the night and I deleted the whole video and <laughs> that it was just done and I was I needed you to come back and redo it. And, and then I woke up and, and I didn't actually delete it. <laughs> that sounds that <laughs> sounds like one of my gnarly business. That, I feel like that's a business dream every business owner has. Yeah. It's just always messed up. Always going at it. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you're interested in what we talked about last time that we don't remember exactly what we talked about last time, go and check out our previous podcast. But Clayton, he is a multi-inspector firm owner too as well out of the Dallas Fort Worth area. He is my, I guess, father's competition in a way, but we do talked about this last time. There is no yeah. true competition there's, in the home inspection world, really. I mean, there's, yeah. I mean, kind of, but at the same time, not. There's not. Yeah. There's, and, a, there's and a lot of business out there's there. There's a lot of business out there. And so, yeah. And, and don't forget, we scooched out to Austin and San Antonio now, too. Oh. So now I'm not competing with any of the Murphys. So wow, I'm, you're like, I'm you're like, you're multi-city Yeah, I'm multi-city now. Multi -city now. Oh my. So that's that's been a fun stretch. Goodness, I, I'm actually <laughs> not going to leave Houston. I've determined where like people Smart offered man. me to Smart like man. open up in like Austin and stuff. And I was like, they actually wanted to just use the A-Action name brand. And I was like, no. Because there's six million people here, you know. There's more yeah. people in Houston there are in like some states. So I was just like, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I'm just like, nah, I pass. Houston's good, good for me. Yeah. Um, so starting out this, I got you this uh, 1942 Don Julio because you and I went out to dinner the other night, and then you ordered tequila. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, he's a tequila man, and I've been wanting to try this tequila. But there's a story behind why I ended up buying it. This is the second time I bought this bottle, but I've never had it before <laughs> I, i'm so, curious so i uh there's a real estate agent that works for uh or not works for us sorry refers us out all the time but there i actually go. consider him a friend you yeah. know like after you've been in the business for eight years you there's people that yes they refer you business but they're, they're your, your friends. friends i have a lot of yeah. friends that are real estate agents yeah, yeah. and Some of my best friends invited me to his birthday party and i'm like sweet and i was like i saw this on that boat show where in this like rich people kept ordering this okay. Don Julio 1942. I'm like, okay. man, I'm going to try that. I like tequila. Sure. So I get it. It's like a $160 bottle. And I'm like, oh man, that's pretty expensive. This is the most expensive tequila I've ever <laughs> had. So that's cool. So I get to his birthday, which is at a restaurant and you know me, I'm not a real rule follower. So I'm oh. like, yeah, let's, let's open it up. Let's open it up. And they're like, no, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, Fine. So he took it home, but it's still on his shelf unopened because he's waiting for me to uh, to open it. So I have now bought three hundred dollars worth of tequila before I have opened it. It's not a crazy funny story, but it's funny. Like I just really want to try this. Now so you're now, now you're now curious. We're gonna, now we're gonna do it. Let's do it. So the Don yeah. Julio 1942 and Yeho. Yeah. So I I'm not like a crazy um, con connoisseur of tequila, so I wouldn't be be able to. Uh, tell the the difference i mean i probably could tell the difference from like really bad tequila but you also had an ice ball in yours last time and i tried to get us the, freeze the us, ice ball the some ice balls in hey, there cheers well. man yeah, like definitely thanks for thanks coming thanks for doing that you hey. get like the death star ice balls yeah. these are totally baller <laughs> yeah coming <laughs> in and um and doing the podcast so i appreciate it there we go is it smooth mm, that's delish that is real good very smooth. Wow, that is that is crazy smooth. There's very no very smooth. Very There's little nothing, bite. Very little bite. Yeah. That so is, you got your silver and then your reposado and then your hill. So usually, yeah. usually the uh, I'm a, I'm a repo kind of guy, but mm -hmm. hey, I love my añejos when the, I can get the, them. The Don Julio. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a. So actually, I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> it's the three grades of yeah. tequila. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Anyways, that you know that's actually a really good tequila. So we're gonna have a, a tequila drink here, and what I want you to open up the podcast with is, you know, whenever I first got into the business, I, my story is actually simple. You know, I get out of the Marine Corps, and my father's a home inspector, so I learned how to become. After I tried college, I just you know I'm gonna do home inspections, and become a home inspector. So my story is actually really easy. But, and I'm starting to realize that most people already had like second careers. This is like a second career thing for them. And I'm like, I should probably know that, you know, <laughs> should probably right. know that. How'd you get into the business? So I got into the business, 
kind of was a generational. So technically, I'm a third generation inspector. But, oh, wow. Um, so my grandfather was the chief city inspector in uh, Shreveport, Bossier, Louisiana. My dad was a, a aircraft inspector for Boeing for like 43 years. So he measured things to the thousands and made sure if there was somebody that built a part and it didn't fit, like he had to go inspect and figure out like who screwed it up. And it's million dollar problems, right? Um, I didn't want to work in the big factory. I was going to do that. So uh, I went to art school. So, <laughs> so art school doesn't pay. <laughs> yeah, so you went from inspectors to being like you're the artsy. Yeah, I was. Yeah. The, I was trying to be the artsy guy. Try to go out there and be the starving artist. You know, um, <laughs> met my wife in the restaurant business. That's probably why I know a lot about tequila because it was a tequila bar that I met her at. So oh, okay. there you have it. You both work there. Yes, she oh, was okay. my boss. <laughs> oh, wow. she still is my boss. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, we we all know if you're. Husband, wife teams, the wife Who's, is actually the boss. The, bo- the wife's the boss. always the boss. Everyone always, always boss. thinks, you know, that we're like the face. They yeah. always see us, the face. They're like, oh, well, you know, mm-hmm. you're the, they think Everybody that we're the boss. We- and, and I always say, no, I'm like, no, actually, Mary's the boss. And they always like, haha, you know, good for giving your wife credit. I'm like, no, I'm actually serious. Yeah. Like, she's. <laughs> She's the boss. Like She's the she boss. actually signs my paychecks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I met the wifey. Uh, I was I went to I came to Dallas originally to go to the art institute and graphic design, and, and the, all the dot coms crashed, and that was terrible. Stayed in the restaurant business a little bit longer. Uh, my mom's a real estate agent, and she was doing government housing and to go into low income neighborhoods and use city, state, and federal grants to like buy a house for cheap, and then put a whole lot more money than a flipper would and then they would qualify a family to go into the house Mm. to bring the value of the neighborhood up so in her doing this um she actually got sent to harvard and to go to real estate school in harvard and that's where she learned about how hey there's this lead-based paint test and i have to do this test and there's one guy in town and he's charging me sixteen hundred dollars for every house i'm doing and they're not big houses you should do this and i was like for lead-based paint okay and so i checked into it looked at it and uh the x-ray machine as you know they're like 30 40 grand plus you know and then your insurance is just ridiculous and so i'm sitting here going you know your insurance goes up when you add. oh you have huge insurance when it comes Mm. to lead-based paint because now it's an environmental thing that you're adding on to your stuff so that's you know the mold the asbestos you know that's going to add anyways so um thought about home inspections had a, a friend that was also in real estate the guy that had just inspected our house, so I was like, well, that was easy. That wasn't so bad. That wasn't hard. I mean, I could do this. I've built houses before with my dad, and like we've done things in roofed houses. Like, let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> so I signed up. Uh, this was in 2007, 2008, right okay. when the market crashed. The oh, market my goodness. Dude. <laughs> You've been part of like two crashes. Two crashes. Yeah. I mean, how how do you have any motivation after yeah. that? <laughs> so and the, and the dumbest thing. So green scene home inspections. I decided that I wanted to change the world and I wanted to do energy audits with every home inspection because, you know, I was at the time older houses. They're like they need to know how to fix this. Right. Because right. That's the mentality of the inspector. Well, I figured out that I made a huge error because agents were telling me like Clayton I think you're great and all but um, if you say anything about energy efficiency during my transaction I will never use you ever <laughs> that was so you're like Ugh. back in 2008 or 2008 2009 oh, okay. so yeah it was it was that That's... era because house it, deals were already hard to come by and it was like you oh, know, yeah, everybody yeah, was yeah. sitting around with nothing and that makes everything sense was, yeah foreclosure city so you're like trying was. to start this like green right. environmental and they were friendly like, get the f out of here you're like, you're like 2020 you yeah you're the year 2020 uh, at 2008 uh, <laughs> i could see people definitely buying energy efficiency yeah. inspections now oh yeah. yeah so and and we add that as a service but that's what i learned is like i don't talk about energy audits uh i waited a year and then i would follow back up with the client after that so um that's how I got into the business. I had three years later, I think. Um, how long did it take to take off? You know, that's actually a really, I think it's a really good question because there's so many people out there that like just start grinding and, you know, you didn't have any coaching, did you? You know, mm-hmm. it was just you and your father mm-hmm. and just grinding at it. You know, like what, what, how long did it actually think it took you before? Well, you- I mean, no, this was just me all by myself. Oh, okay. and, and I remember um, the first time. So I, I went out and I signed up for a hit and I had uh, JD Fuller as an instructor and i remember sitting through the first like classes and i came up to him after class and i was like this is really hard there's yeah. a lot of numbers here it's a like, lot i don't of know stuff, if i can yeah. do this and he's like just stick with this get through the program we'll make sure that you're in there right so 
a huge moment of life and I kind of just didn't give up and I made flashcards and I'm a terrible test taker and I don't, my focus is about as good as your focus. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> it was hard to get me to study for this thing, but I was determined and did it's, it and launched it's, it. And, what he's referring to is we both got pretty good ADD action. And it's funny if we're both at a tender table, we'll have like three different conversations and just bring it back around. It, it, it always comes back around <laughs> maybe within the hour, yeah. but all the conversations will be complete within that, that hour. Within that moment. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that just describes the hustle, you know, it's just like fail fail you know art art fail fail yeah. fail but you just kept going yeah. you know now you have a successful multi-city inspection firm that's that's actually really cool thank you sir and yeah. fail move, forward fail fast and fail often yeah exactly you know just yeah, yeah just because you failed you, you don't just keep grinding at what you're failing at just just change, change it up change. just change it up just and boop, you know you're boop, like boop. you didn't keep grinding at the environmental thing you're like hey this is going to keep going you're just yeah. like nope switch yeah. and then Tomp. go to the next thing yeah you hear it you hear it doesn't work you're like yeah you're, you're right that probably doesn't work and then just just move on all right <laughs> yeah adjust. adjust so uh moving in now you are uh teaching that's the reason why you're here in houston and yeah. you're, you're you're teaching at a hit and mm -hmm. uh one of the biggest questions we get all the time uh that i get all the time is like you know, how to train a home inspector. And that's actually, you know, really hard. We've changed our training program like three times now. And we just had a recent podcast with Josh talking about our podcast, but you only get these students, what, for four days, four days. Mm -hmm. So, and you have to convert someone, you know, someone that knows nothing about home inspections and get them in the mindset of being like, okay, this is what a home inspection actually is. Because, you know, anyone coming in this field, they think, they know something, but you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And then you have to like change their mindset the of whole way they think yeah, about home inspecting. So what do you think you do in this school that changes a new person, how to think like a home inspector, uh, like to train a new yeah. on, oncoming student? Yeah. A new student. They come in. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. um, I wasn't sorry if you were saying about instructor or, or student, but student, yeah. I student. would say, um, you know, we start out and introduce ourselves and just what do you feel comfortable with? How much of the modules have you gone through? Some people that signed up last week and I haven't studied anything and I don't know anything about this. And so you're like, oh boy, this so is going to be fun. They're allowed to come into the field right away before the module? Sometimes they just, have It's just how the schedule... AHIT does not encourage that. They really okay. want you to complete the majority of your modules. But sometimes... So it's how the schedule works Sometimes, out. Sometimes, yeah, people just mm. get in there and sign up for it. So I ask their experience, kind of see where they are. Um, and just like when you're dealing with a client in the home inspection business, you just you ask them, how many times have you owned a house? What's, you know, you want to get to know them so you know who you're talking to. Oh, yeah. The, the main thing that I tell the guys, though, is like no matter if you're almost done with all your modules and all you need is my little certificate, your 40 hours of field training certificate, and then you're done or you're just done, you haven't studied anything. My job is to do what my instru original instructor taught me, which was... Here's the process of the inspection. Mm -hmm. So that's what J.D. Fuller taught me back in the day. Um, it's the triple double. You go around three times this time, this time, that time. And so that first day is rough because you're, right. you're grinding you're it out and you're just going through it. But my job is to not teach building codes, okay? Or we're going to talk about them, of course, but I don't, I'm not trying to hammer that in. Um, my job is to keep them safe, Right. Right. To keep them comfortable. Right. Uh, and then to make sure that they stick to this routine. And then I don't want them to break anything. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> that, that, that's a lot. Yeah. So. So, yeah. F yeah. First day. Yeah. So from what I'm hearing is, is like getting them into the mindset of home inspections. It's actually not even teaching them about how you're inspecting or what exactly you're looking for. It's almost like the process that you follow to begin with. I'm here, then yeah. I'm then I'm here, and then I'm here. No matter know. what age house I'm at, no matter yeah. how big the house it's, is, if I do this routine, I won't miss anything. So your main goal is like the routine first mm -hmm. before you even get into the part of like, all right, this is how I break down an oven, mm -hmm. or this is how I break down the water heater. Right. That's that's actually really smart, you know, like uh, just so they understand that there's a process to everything. And the very first process that you need to learn is, is the, the, the path, yeah. <laughs> the path that <laughs> the I follow. Process, yeah. yeah the, so, you know, I have my path on, um, I guess, YouTube that you can 
look up. It's our home inspection routine. But what you just described was a little bit different. You know, what what you, I'm pretty sure you can spit it out like fire. What is your routine? You uh, yeah, I mean, it's nothing secretive. I, I think this is the maybe the way that your dad does it or as well. But your triple double is so um, three passes. You find your hard stop. Maybe you have a gate on both sides. If not, you just start at the front so, door, go so, to the left. So the very first time you, you get to the property and mm-hmm. you and you start. So well, hold on. Let's yeah. if you really want to go from detailed. So yeah. the first thing you do is make sure you're at the right house. So that is a fact. <laughs> I have no. That's actually really smart. I've walked into two wrong houses. The first one was think. Thankfully, it was vacant, and it was literally the neighbor's house. Yeah. And then the second one, I literally walked in on people. Yeah. Like, I've, I, I've, and so this is the first thing I teach. Yeah. My job is not to like. We're gonna keep you safe, keep us safe, and we're yeah. gonna make sure we're doing the right thing. That's actually. So, Crazy important. Make sure you're at the right house. I had an inspector one time who totally inspected the wrong house, calls the agent, where are you at? She's like, I'm in the kitchen, where are you? And she's like, I'm here in the kitchen. Oh, no. It was the house next door. He did the whole thing, crawl space, wrote the report, everything, and then did the wrong house. Oh, it was for sale too, wasn't it? They were both for (laughs) sale. Both for sale. Oh, nasty. So (laughs) What a nasty day. Did he have another inspection after that? No, it was Friday. It was his Friday afternoon inspection. Oh, so it was just a really long day. So we had to call the sellers and ask permission. Hey, we're boneheads. We're idiots. We're sorry. Oh. Can can your sellers stay gone for another time so that he can come inspect the correct oh, house? Oh yeah, so because it was in, it was a lived in property. So yeah, we, yeah. So, so we had to I, totally change our agent, but he sucked it up and like you know he's he was there till seven or eight o'clock that night. Yeah, that's a long day. It was his mistake, but he you know he fixed it. So fell, fell forward, fell fast, and exactly. learned that one right. <laughs> uh, so starting out teaching, you know, make sure you're at the right house, right? Yep. I want you to be safe. Um, just had a, a realtor that was killed uh, because, you know, realtor safety thing. He was dealing with a the client. They, you know, we've had inspectors get killed when uh, walking, bad, in the wrong house. walking into wrong houses and stuff. So that's a big deal, right? Yeah. So for I didn't me, hear those a, stories, a, but a lot I, of the stories I that I have are just, you know, I've lost friends. I've, mm-hmm. I've had friends lose limbs and stuff because they weren't safe. So we talk about safety. I tell them that the, my fire extinguisher and my first aid kit, where it's at in my vehicle, because yeah. I've had a fireman catch a house on fire. You know who you are. You're probably watching. He's on. Uh, he's on. <laughs> is he on your team? He, no, he's not. He, he, I, he was one of my uh, A hit students. Oh, okay. Um, and he's no. wearing, yes, and he was wearing a fire chief shirt, and I'm just like, oh, man, that's God. actually really smart, man. I I literally fly by the seat of my pants, so like I even feel, move faster than most people, I think. So like yeah. I wouldn't even think about keeping a fire extinguisher. That's I, I that's when, yeah, crazy smart because. You never know, right? You never Setting know what's that going up on. And lighting stuff on fire. So yeah. you know, uh, you're you're a marine. Then the next thing you do is you ring the doorbell, knock on the door. Before you open the key, is there an alarm code, right? Yeah. And then you enter the house, right? And then when you enter the house, you announce yourself, "Hello, right. home inspector." So the reason you knock and ring the doorbell, I found out one time because I rang the doorbell, opened the super box, went inside. Ladies, butt ass naked, just ah. standing there in her living room, like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry, <laughs> I'm so sorry." She's like, yeah, the doorbell doesn't work. Like, clearly. So now you know. Now, now I knock. knock. So I train all my guys. Ring the doorbell and knock. Knock. <laughs> yeah. Get both. Get so, both of them. Uh, and then you enter the house, set your tools down, uh, go to the back door because you want two points of exit in case there is something wrong or bad. Yeah. And then go out in the backyard, find your starting point. Like if there's a hard stop fence or whatever, come right. inside. Go to the kitchen. I like all that. your utilities so, on. So you can get the start. area of the whole property of the outside just looking around maybe like we can set up your ladder and stuff and then and then you set set up in the kitchen and yeah. start yeah yeah so and then we do a, a what we call you know set up pass go turn everything on get the house ready to be inspected yep, the and quick then pass yep start like, and then get quick after it. quick pass and then what roof exterior attic and then down uh no so we start we go bottom up so we start outside oh so you don't even down, start it's quick yep. pass and then outside yeah. so you don't even do the roof down you do bottom up so you mm-hmm. do quick pass inside then an outside pass and then roof pass mm-hmm. and then actually start on the bottom floor and then work your way up yeah so yeah. Uh, if it's a, if it's a sing, let's just say single story house so we won't make it too confusing you have to have two story i'll go with two two you want yeah. two stories yeah, all right do, let's yeah. do two stories yeah. so if you're doing a two-story house um 
start out at the front door, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're doing all your plumbing checks and that kind of fun stuff. Uh, and then start your passes wherever they are. So the first time I'm only so looking start down, at the, the front I'm door. only looking at, I'm only looking at the slab and grading and drainage. That's yeah. it. I'm not looking at the walls. I'm not looking up. I'm only yeah. looking down. I'm looking at everything. What's going on. I'm trying to familiarize myself with the house. Yeah. Then once I get back to my starting point, then it's the walls. I'm looking at all the walls. And so that's outlets, that's doors, that's windows, that's anything, you know, so there. you do three passes on and the then outside. A third pass. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice, and, yeah. And then, you know, do the interior, same thing. Floors and then walls and yep. ceilings. I know some guys go room to room. I know I can it's a different yeah. style, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, this is the way that I was taught originally. We've modified it, obviously, because we've screwed some things up yeah. over the years. And I, That's what I tell anyone that's training <laughs> us and you're like, they're trying to come up with something new. I'm like, listen, anything that we have created and it's in our reports, yeah. it's because I paid for it. You yeah. know, like <laughs> yeah. that we've messed up, you know, and that's part of like developing the routine or running a business. You just fail but fail. try not to fail you know i'd say more than three times you know so, two times is okay here but whatever. bringing it back around to just teaching the students and getting them into that mindset um telling these stories that are out there kind of you know it ingrains in them like oh don't oh this let, is don't why I do this, this happen to you yeah. yeah never leave a bathroom with the water on yeah i mean <laughs> never ever i used to we used to have a lot of floods and i was like no this is a bad idea we're not doing this anymore <laughs> i think that was one of the very first things that taught me and i you know i messed it up you know yeah i messed it up and then uh yeah so no, that's a good routine. I like it. So you actually actually do one more pass than us on everything. So you do three passes of it, and we do two passes. So how and long are you there for? Like an hour for every thousand square feet, or hour yeah, and a half? It's for about it? an hour. Our, our average time is about three and a half hours. Okay. I'd say, and that's with a report written as as we leave. Yeah. So it's a it's 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 a good process, and I think I, on average, I think we've brought probably 160 photos you know it's a lot yeah that's it, about right it was funny uh, tyler uh we just did, he said that man i inspected a home that you did back in 2014 and he's like i was able to pull up the old report on isn and yeah. he's like you had like 30 photos <laughs> i was like yeah lots changed since then he's like yeah. yeah i know i know because like now bare minimum a panel box gets like six photos yeah. and before i used to just be like click you know and then that was it. That was it. Yeah. You know, now it's like, you know, you take a picture of the panel box, take a picture of like where the wires are connected and then like, you know, angles yeah. so you can see everything. So if anything ever b- comes up down the line, you can, you know, blow it up yeah. and really look at it. And it's just funny how you train someone and then you add in something new and you train someone and you add someone new. It's just like it, 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 it gets adjust. ingrained. Adjust. It just adjusts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now our Every reports time. on average are pretty decent i mean i wouldn't say long it's just lots of photos you know yeah. document a lot of things yeah. in there so we, when we're training uh, that's one of the do, things i do with the trainees to get them in that mindset is like okay i'm going to show you three inspection reports and there's here's a really bad one <laughs> i'm not going to say whose it is and who it came from but here's here's one don't do this don't be right. this guy uh here's one that's like you know 80 Excessive. pages 100 yeah. pages and they then, have like code references yeah and like exactly book. the code check yeah. and like all this stuff uh and then here's one that's just like boom sweet spot here's the you know 30 Pro- 40 pages and like the right amount picture. of pictures and right. just not anything i've seen other reports that the whole report is just nothing but pictures and it's like you gotta use words you gotta use words <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know there's spell check out there don't worry about it you're good just type something yeah, <laughs> yeah. so getting them into that mindset and then we go back to that same house that we started on and then mm. we just do the full-on inspection and go through each individual story of here's the toilet inspection here's the oven inspection here's the furnace inspection right yeah so the the main goal is like when you first get somebody to put them in the mindset you know don't overload them too much and by you're going to overload them a little bit but the routine is like everything yeah. that's what i used to always say you know routine the end of that routine, first routine. day they're all just like mind blown i, I like, thought i knew everything i'm yeah, a licensed no. professional it's like home drinking inspector. from a fire hydrant <laughs> i'm licensed i'm a professional yeah that's one thing in our industry that maybe one day will change yeah you know where you I know what i'm doing yeah mm. i passed the test yeah. <laughs> that that's actually i mean i remember being like that i remember going through the school and then uh, finishing everything, passing the test, actually being a licensed professional home inspector, and then going out with my dad the first day, and I'm being like, I don't know anything. 
Like, <laughs> nothing. I am... How old were you when you went on your first inspection? Like, even as a, as a young... Uh, I think 27, 28. Okay. You know, if I think... Yeah, because I got out of the Marine Corps. Oh, no, way earlier than that. Like, even no. when you're in high school or anything, he didn't ever oh, take you Oh, oh, you mean going out on inspection? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I probably went out when I was like 15, you know, 14 okay. or something during the summer, you know, when my dad was teaching. And I remember enjoying it and liking it. But, you know, you're 14, 15 years yeah. old. You don't even think like this is actually a privilege. Yeah. You know, some people out there are like begging people to do ride alongs. And yeah. me, I'm like, oh, I'm on a ride along. do this. Yeah, I'm 15. Look, let me I, go watch TV I or something. I took my son with me. Uh, he was five. And, and uh, I had, you know, the wife was there because it was for a family friend or whatever. And I went in the crawl space and he just kind of looked down in the hole and looked at, at my wife and where'd he go? And my wife's like, well, he's gone. Bye. And he's looking down the hole. Bye, daddy. Yeah. And he's like, bye. And then closes the door and closes ah. the door. <laughs> <laughs> he closed you in the crawl space. He, he, clo he closed me in the crawl space. That's yeah, I was funny. like, no. But That's yeah. funny. That's actually... That is really funny. Have you taken your kids now that they're older? Because aren't they like 12 or something? I haven't taken... Yeah, they're, they're yeah. 10 and 12. I haven't taken them since, but they're, they hear us talk so much shop that, yeah, they probably would never... Not, not interested? Not interested. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that that's actually like funny. It's like, since it's a family business for us, that's 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 all we... That's almost like what we talk about, you know, whenever we're around. That's, we enjoy talking about it. Yeah. So it's not like bad by any means. It's just like, hey... Do you, do you have like uh, a, a, a code word or a... Safe word that's like just oh it's too much yeah yeah we just say hey let's not talk inspections that's, yeah that's kind of okay <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if there was like a yeah. code word or anything it's like <laughs> yeah so anyways moving on you know it's funny like how you have this system broken down with a hit you know and a hit I trained with a hit I think it was like a year ago and I thought it was funny whenever we went out to dinner last night I didn't even know I did this but it's funny like wherever I go. I just ruffle feathers. I think I even have an ashy story too after this one, I guess. But like, you know, I was training him. Uh, Jim took me out. He told me what to do and, you know, how to train. And he saw I did really well the first two days. So he left me alone for the next two days. And so whenever I was inspecting, like I, I'm an open book, man. You can ask me anything and I'll yeah. literally just tell you. People shoot me messages all the time on Facebook. You're like, what's this? And I'm just like, all right, here you go. Yeah. And I just tell them exactly what it is. Yeah. And they were like begging me. They're like, hey, Chris, how do you, how, you know, I get this. I understand the process now. I understand, you know, pretty much what to look for. But we don't even know what a report looks like. How do you write a report? I'm like, I mean, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm an action person. I'm like, yeah. you want to write a report? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, sweet. All right. You go to the roof. You do the exterior. You do the attic. Yeah. And you do the kitchen because they're going to take forever. Yeah. Take whatever photos you think are important. And then each one of us are going to talk about and I'm going to walk you through and write the report. So okay. I upload all the report uh, stuff into my inspection software, <laughs> which a hit has a very specific software that you're supposed to use, right. upload it all up, put it in the system. And then they answer the questions and I upload it with my comments and, and show it to them. And but, we write a report but, and then I review the report with them. Just to be clear, you are not using a hit software. Right? No, no, yeah, not software. using okay, a hit. I'm just making sure. So, yeah, the, this is part of me ruffling the feathers. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, and then I, and then I reviewed the report with them. Yeah. Like I would review a client they're like, wow. That was so much information, but I really think I understand. They got the whole process. They understand like how to do the inspections. They right. understood the SOP by the end. They saw how to complete a full inspection by the end. Yeah. And then I thought I walked away. I was like, man, I did a fucking good great job. job. I'm sorry. Didn't yeah. mean to drop the F-bomb. But like I did a great job. <laughs> awesome job. And then it, like a year later, I sit yeah. at the dinner table with you. And then they were like, he was like, yeah, people are complaining that you showed people how to use a different software and right. teach them how to write a full report. I'm like, yeah, I thought I taught them really well. Yeah. And, ju <laughs> and just to be fair, as far as I've learned, because I'm the new kid on the block, I just kind of go and I'm new school and there's old school. But apparently there is another instructor that did pretty much the exact same thing. So you yeah. can't feel too guilty about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> on his first day? <laughs> Not on his first day, no. Yeah. Yeah, but, but apparently I just like knock down walls. And I didn't even realize this is a problem. And the people listening might not even see it as a problem. But like there's so much politics in every other corporation or yeah. industry and I'm just like walk in and I just kind of do whatever I want. Yeah. I'm just like, well, yeah. you know, it's the changing of the guards, right? Like yeah. you, you've got your, your old school, um, God 
bless his heart, uh, JD passed away here not too yeah. long ago. There's a lot of other older inspectors that are trainers. They're just they're not walking around anymore. So somebody's got to step in there and do it. And yeah, here we go. But we yeah. think a little different than yeah, just, just others. We teach a little different than others. And exactly. There's nothing wrong with that though, you know. Yeah. So I'll probably uh, do it again. It's just been so busy running the company, and you know I've been traveling a lot lately since the whole COVID thing is released. But every time yeah. they schedule to come down to Houston, there it's it's blocked, and I'm yeah. like, oh man. But um. Yeah, so ruffling feathers. I did the same thing at Ashy. It was funny. They did like uh, a a a team, a young Ashy member right. group meeting, and someone invited me to go there. I'm like, nah, man. I just I rub people. You know, people always get angry every time I give my opinion because I literally have no filter. You want my opinion? Yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna tell you. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. So they were they were like, hey, what do you think we could do to improve Ashy? And and they're like, stand up. You know and and just say it and i was just like um i was the first one to raise my hand i'm like sure i'll give you my opinion You're the marine of yeah, course i was just like yeah. i was just like sure i'll give you my opinion i stood <laughs> up i'm like well um you can't get mad at me that's what i start with i was like but uh your website sucks you know, like i really could barely figure out anything and <laughs> uh the team meeting that we just uh that your meetings that you have on line you know right. they don't exist you're saying they exist but they're not there and uh anytime that someone comes up with a new idea you get really mad at them and uh and then they're the bad guy and then yeah yes what happened they got mad at me yeah. for telling them that their website sucks i yeah. literally said it just like that i was yeah. like your website sucks and they they got really mad at me and i'm like but someone told me my website sucks i'd be like oh man maybe i should fix it you know like right. or figure out what's I'm going trying on to help you yeah yeah right. like but no they got really mad at me and so i was just like it's funny i did that at ashley so i like try to pull back a little bit and not you know ruffle right. feathers too much right. in the inspection world a hit hires me to come out and teach which it pays really well which is nice but uh, then I turn around and ruffle feathers the first day. <laughs> I was like, what, what? I just, I just taught inspectors how to inspect. I don't, right. I don't get it. I don't know what's wrong. You're like, you're just doing whatever you want. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I probably taught better than yeah. everybody yeah. <laughs> that could have taught them. I, and I don't do things like the other instructors. I'm a little bit different. So, uh, I do something that JD did with me and, and we start our day at Home Depot every day. And so we start at Home Depot and, and we go through one day we'll do the plumbing aisle and one day we'll do the electrical aisle. And then that also makes it more real because they've been to Home Depot before. And so then they're like, oh, that's what this is. That's why. Oh, you actually walk this. them through and teach them all the parts of everything. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's man. I, you, when next time you do that, bring me along with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've always thought about yeah. shooting like a little gorilla podcast inside yeah. of Home Depot. Like, all right, here's what's going on here. This is what this is. Yeah. Yeah. The store manager's not around. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> no, that, that sounds fun. I'd actually go around that. I mean, like if that's how you were trained the very first time you joined, yeah. I mean, I mean like if I draw, I'd like to follow you along, maybe I can add it into my training program. Yeah. We that's spent actually... a whole day there. Like we spent like a whole like day. we didn't go do a house that day we went to home depot that day and so that's we actually really smart because a lot of people that join time. this industry have no construction experience whatsoever right. so you know they just and they just like come in they come take in the test it. and then they don't have any tangible like yeah. things tactile like they don't have that tactile thing they're like all right i passed the test they yeah. can actually go inspect yeah and they don't know what they're looking at so yeah. like by you walking to that you change their whole perception of yeah. what they're looking at. That's so we cool. And we read the standards of practice, you know, and if we're by water heaters, we're going to read this, you know, standards of practice for water heaters and talk oh, about okay. it while so we're standing next to the water So you bring the SOP mm -hmm. to Home Depot yeah. and yeah. then break down like what exactly you should be looking at. Yeah. That's actually... I, I like that. I we, know. That's it, all I have are good brilliant things. <laughs> Maybe Sometimes I, I don't execute them well. I might, but. I might be giving Josh a new task. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be like, all right, the new trainee, the first day, y'all go to Home Depot, yeah. bring the SOP with you, and yeah. kind of break it down so that you can... Because it's hard doing it when you're at someone's home, yeah. right? But like at Home Depot, you have all the time in the world. Yeah. You know, there's no time Now, I will say, I always go get the store manager and tell them that, hey, we're, there's going to be four to five guys walking around just standing there talking, and here's what we're doing. But I'm... I also try to help them like point out which tools to buy and which ones, you know, not to buy and things and stuff. So, Oh yeah. That makes sense. Like, because a lot of people buy a lot of junk when they first start. Yeah. I, I'm probably like the king of that. You I are. It, <laughs> yeah. I know you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're looking around the office. You're like, what are all these What's tools? All yeah. Those didn't work. <laughs> we're just sitting there. Yeah, uh. No, they're backup tools. Backup tools. There you go. Backup tools. I like it. 
Yeah, so um, the next question I have. So we talked about A-Hit, Ruffling yeah. Some Feathers, and then um, what we what I have here is, I, I thought this was actually really interesting. Like when I joined uh, Home Inspecting, and uh, I already knew I was going to be a multi-inspector firm because I, I joined yeah. a, a, into a multi-inspector firm. So that's that's all I know, right? And then we were sitting at the dinner table and uh, the other inspector that's a single man operator, he thought about it, contemplating it. And I was like, you know what? I wonder what Clayton's defining moment of actually wanting to be a multi-inspector firm. Because it's not like you, you might've had outside influences. No, there was a very yeah, specific moment. So like moment. you started off as just a single man <laughs> operator and you're just going out there doing jobs. And then yeah. it was just like, hey, I want to you know, I think I want to grow a business, you know, so what made it turn you into having, you know, I don't like to say single man operators don't have a business. A lot of people say they don't, but if you manage it correctly, you invest your money properly. It is a business. Yeah. It's just, you're not going to be able to sell it. Right. But whenever you decided you're like, Hey, I want to run a home inspection business. What, what was it? What? So, uh, there, well, I should say two defining moments. One of them's funny. So, uh, third grade, Miss Atkins, she said, Clayton, you're, you're a leader and not a follower. And so you should just do what you want to do and not follow the crowd. And I'm like, thank you. Awesome. So that always thought, thanks, Miss Atkins, if you're still alive and out there. <laughs> uh, the second moment was, so after, uh, you know, th- that you hit that third or fourth year of, of in business and then boom, you're just like, bam. You, I had multiple VIP agents hit me up and they were like, hey, I need an inspection on Friday. Hey, I need an inspection. And I didn't have any more room, right? So what do I do? I get creative and I'm like, okay, I can do this inspection from, uh, I can get there at like 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock. But if I go the night before and get the key out of the key box, then I don't have to wait for the super box. Wow, you're like so super hustling. I was I was there at like uh, six in the morning. I started one, finished it at like nine thirty, and it was appearing beam ten o'clock. Uh, got to the next one, uh, and then another one. And it was like you know summertime, so the sun stayed out longer, so I could get that like extra time in. Uh, so and I, I finished my last one at like seven thirty. So inspected four houses for almost 13 and a half hours straight. And then I went home to write four reports. Oh, you weren't even writing on site? Not all. Oh, and man. that was the moment that I was like, I need to hire someone. I wonder like, like how much stuff you missed. No. I missed. <laughs> I'm so sorry for those people. If they were... Cause everything just melds together yeah. and you got to rely on your photos. Uh, and at the time I was using a voice recorder, so yeah. I was leaning on my voice. That, recorder. Things were different back then though. Yeah. I yeah. used to carry a printer with me so we could print our reports out on site. So I always had to get printer paper and little yeah. you know, ink cartridges to make sure that I could print reports out on site for agents that wanted. We yeah. had a fax number, right? We yeah, still my, have a fax number. Yeah. My dad, he was typewriter. They actually wrote some on typewriters when they first got into the business. So you must've came in right on the printer phase where you're, yeah. it was like a big deal to print that report it really was on site yeah and i literally came in right right with the the laptop phase <laughs> like we had that big clunky laptop yeah you know, out there so yeah so the the fighting moment how many jobs how many how long did you do those four jobs a day i mean that's a lot no that was one time and, oh. and, I, and I vowed never to do it again never again I don't it's, even like doing three a day. No, no, three like, is too much. It's yeah. like two a day. That's like it's too much perfect. for to mentally process. Yeah. I think like and and then also go back to work the next day. Three a day is definitely yeah. possible, but like to go back the next day and complete a really good job, yeah. you you eventually it's burn hard. out. Now yeah. you could do like uh you know two little condos and then you know a oh, house yeah. right or a reinspection that would be, or, or a reinspection like yeah. or a phase inspection or you know whatever it is draw yeah. inspection. You can fit a little one in, and so that's what we try to do with our schedule. Is get, yeah. The guys can get one beforehand, and then they get their two regular. I just spots. do two, man. Just keep it simple, yeah, stupid. Yeah, we try, yeah. but you know, phones yeah. ringing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I. But at the same time, like I always think, like time. I have always. I talked to you about this the other day. It was just like I really do view time as more valuable than money. Yeah, the money will be there. Yeah. You know, it, eventually, yes, the market will slow down again it will crash again but like at the same time like i you only have so long to live so i much rather enjoy my work-life balance yeah and whenever i first started i mean i did not think like that i don't think i started thinking like that until probably like right during covid (laughs) i guess i was just like man i grinded all this time and then like boom the market you know crashed and then it went back hot again yeah but then i was just like you know what there's no point in like 
over pushing it, you know, just yeah. work on it when it's there, you know, do the jobs you can sleep well, yeah, when you, know, you can, when you can. And then, you know, so I, I I'm a big believer in the, the, the just, just do two yeah. and, or the reinspection. You can squeeze in a reinspection yeah. or a phase, but like I will not do three mm-hmm. to save my life. No. Yeah. There's, there's only a handful of my guys that I would even allow to do it. And yeah. it's only, you know, certain times of the year. That, that makes sense too. Gonna, like they're like the really it. experienced ones. They just mm-hmm. can knock it out. Yeah. Like, yeah. My defining moment is I uh, started my business. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'm like, in. And I failed a lot, man. Like doing the hiring process, you could probably talk about it. And this kind of leads into my next question a little bit, but we can talk about some of the fail hires. My very first hire, you know, I hired a friend and he's <laughs> honestly, I still think he's a good inspector today, but yeah. it was like one of those things where I kind of forced him into it. You know, oh, he was yeah, like out hard. of the, he was out of the Marine Corps. He was in between things like, Hey, you could do this, but it wasn't what he wanted, he wanted to do, to do. you yeah. know, like it ended up paying him. He did good money, but it took me six months to train him. Right. And then he only worked for like seven months. And so like in six months is way too long to train. I'm obviously I'm new yeah. at hiring someone yeah. and everyone makes that same mistake. Um, but, and then, and then uh, he left. I was like, all right, well, I have to change it. So I changed it again and, you know, just kept thinking everyone could be a home inspector. Yeah. And that's, that's not, not a thing. That's not how it, it works. was the Marine Corps mentality. So, yeah. Cause you know, like you're in the Marine Corps, on, you can literally you force can anyone do to this. do anything. Help me do this. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I called my, uh, I called JD, my original instructor from a hit. And I was like, who do you got that's coming through class? Like I need to hire somebody. Cause I had always kind of gone back to his classes and helped him teach at the, yeah. at the time. Um, and he had, uh, three guys that he sent me and all of them were firemen. Two of them were brothers and, uh, met them, thought they were cool guys. You know, here we go. Train them, show them how, you know, my process, this is how I do it. This is what's up and going. And we probably ran, um, I brought all three of them on at once. I was like, not even one at a time. I just said, all three of you, come on, let's go. And so then, oh my goodness. Yeah, biggest mistake you could ever make. So, so you just brought like, all three of them on at once, trained them how to do everything, got into the schedule, got everything going. It's kind of like a, a hot rod for a car, right? Like I put a bigger intake and exhaust and fuel injection and super <laughs> turbos. Like, and then we went really fast down the strip. But nobody told me that you're not supposed to use, you know, three, 300 or PSI, a NOS and a turbocharger. So it all just blew up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So the, fire, the fireman, uh, what, nine weeks in, something like that around there, we would have our little team meeting and all of them came and said, all right, well... Uh, we've started our own company and we're oh, leaving and no. we're taking all your agents. And so they did. They took like half my VIP agents because I didn't make them sign anything. They're not supposed to do that. And so I call my instructor and I was like, they did this to me. <laughs> and he's like, well, I wouldn't have hired somebody until they signed my agreement. And that's how JD talks. He's had that yeah. East Texas, East Texas I, kind I of accent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wow, shit, that sucks. So I got burned by the fireman. Yeah, that's funny. We've had, you know, big mistakes, but at the same time, it's, it's just different, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, just, if you're ever thinking about starting a multi-inspector firm, it's, it's not easy. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it just like grinds and struggles. And sometimes I'm, I'm worried that I make it look too easy, but it is easy. What I like to say for me, but like for someone else to come in and just think they can do it, it's, it's actually not easy at all. It's just like me whenever I was talking to my friend that was just over here, he's a computer engineer. Doing anything computer related is super, super easy yeah. to him. But like, but for me, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, really, I don't know the point I'm trying to get here is being a multi-inspector firm, you're going to fail a lot. I yeah. think that's, that's well, we were what, just talking about challenges and the things yeah. that we run up against and the, you know, the, the headaches and the heartaches and, and everybody wants to be a multi-inspector firm, but truth be told, uh, it's hard. There's a lot of, uh, what I call it is emotional capital, right? Right. You said you were just going on vacation and doing the thing and, and you go on vacation to recharge your emotional oh, batteries, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I think that we were talking to the other inspector last night about being a single man operator. Like his stress level is high and just in a different way, but yeah. ours is like high in a whole different level. A whole like, different level. We're like literally like on energy drinks is like constantly. Yeah. And then you're like, man, I just need to check out. Like it's intense. It's just so much is coming at me all the time. Yeah. I can't even, I actually can't even mentally even do like an inspection anymore because I'm just 
handling so much. Yeah. It's just a lot. It's a lot. So it's just like, I'm all, I have to, I always make sure if I'm doing an inspection or I'm requested, someone else is there with me yeah. because I guarantee you something else is going to happen or my phone's going to ring during the inspection. And even when people request me, I'm always like, Hey, I'll show up. I'll be there. I'll do the inspection. But I just want to let you know someone else is going to be there to do the inspection because yeah. I, I am running a company. Yeah. You know, you know. You're better than, I don't even say anything. I just book it and go and then let the other guy do it. And then I just sit there with them when they're doing the whole time and like, yeah, do yeah. anything. But I'm, yeah, mm-hmm. I also use that time to review my inspector. Yeah. That, so. it, it works both ways. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to, to keep them on, you know, see how they're working in the field. But like, yeah, I'm always open with communication with everything. I meant maybe something to add into your, yeah. into the toolbox. Just let them yeah. know. And they're like, oh, okay. So like, if you ever have to leave, early it's almost expected they're yeah. like oh yeah that, make, go. well, well, right, that, cool. that right. makes sense yeah in my company i'm the wolf so pulp fiction mm-hmm. right somebody blows somebody's head off in the back of their car or whatever and you're in a neighborhood <laughs> and you got to make a phone call to somebody yeah i'm that guy they're gonna oh, make the they phone come call and clean to, up the mess come clean up the mess yeah. yeah okay go get me some shirts and towels you uh go get the water hose you uh, i'm gonna need some soap and then you know i could relate totally smooth and just like yep that happened this was terrible but let's do this let's do this Ask i'm here to fix it and i'm here to fix it that's too funny i i, I like i like i like the reference but maybe not as extreme <laughs> right but i i completely understand no but in uh, in, in reality the wolf that's all you had to say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny okay so uh final one uh, that we have on the on the podcast i got for you one of the things that were brought up the other night in the dinner and i thought that was uh pretty important you know as a solo man operator that he asked um what you know how do you feel about hiring someone that is not as good as you and then having them do inspections that you sell you know and i thought that we both have answers to this question and i'm gonna let you go first it was just like I, I thought that question was funny because whenever i first started hiring people i had the same concept that's the reason why the guy was in the training for six months right. he wasn't going to be released until like he's as good as sure. me and then i was like well you know what, what's your thoughts on that So, uh, I'm going to, if you stick to the process, right there, and, and for me, and I don't know how you do it, but, um, it's the process. So if it's like, if you can do it the way that we want you to do it, and I can tell because I'm going to look at your 163 pictures to know if you took the right pictures. Um, and then it's the report is the second part. If you can make sure that all your reports are good and I'm reviewing their reports and then it's the rapport with the client, right? And then mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to have that. Everybody's different. So everybody has different strengths in those areas. Right. So it's hiring the right person uh, that, all right, I know when I meet them that they're going to be a great inspector, right? right? Uh, but their people skills, we, if that's, we got to work on that. Like, is that really, because you got to be able to meet all of these mm-hmm. areas. Yeah. So, but how do you feel about it? You know, like that was the question, like, you know, would you, you know, do you, do you think like when you're hiring someone, do you think that they are, you know, not as good as you, you know, by being on your team? And I think that was, I can't, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I kind of dodged it and came back to it, but look at me. I mean, nobody's like me. (laughs) I I know there's nobody like me, but, um, that when I had the firemen and and I brought them on board and and it was like, they're coming, but it's not you. And I want you there. And it was like, ah, it's okay. But there's this person. Um, when I feel good and I feel, and I've kind of checked off on all these check boxes to make Mm. sure that, okay, you're doing this, you're doing this. I know that you're as good as I could do it. Right. You're going to be doing it the same caliber. The same, the same way. Truth be told, and you were probably like this too. My lead inspectors are way better inspectors than I am probably by now at this that, point. That's you know? that was my answer to them too as well. And they I make mean, more like, money than yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I put yeah, I put them right there. I was I was just like you know honestly honestly man like um, I actually believe that some of my inspectors, my senior inspectors, they're they're better or if not the same mm-hmm. or or the same. I don't yeah. want to say if not the same if. No, they are the same or better right. because they're doing like 400 jobs a year. I might do like 10, you yeah. know, like out of emergencies now. I'm, I'm like running a business and I, I'm not hiring people that are bad. You know, and if they are bad, they're not going to stay in the company. You, right. know, you know, they're, 
they, 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 they're not going to stay. Yeah. The, I, I weed them out so fast and through the training program. So, and by them being part of the group, they even have more resources than I did whenever I first started. You know, when I first started, I was on my, you know, I did have my dad, but I'm down here in Houston. He's yeah. up in Dallas. Yeah. So I'm on my own. Yeah. If something happens, that's, that's me. I got to figure it I out. I got to figure it out. I yeah. got to fix it. And uh, now, like, if something messes up, like you said, like a bathroom overflows, they're calling you, you're hopping in your truck. They get to keep moving on mm -hmm. with their day. You fix the problem mm -hmm. and then go from there. Yeah. So, like, I actually think as like running a, a multi inspector firm and being an inspector in the firm that's ran well, they're actually better yeah. than I was whenever I was on my own. The, they have yeah. tools and resources and tools, a team to lean on and, resources and they're not just yeah. by themselves and they have time at home like it's yeah. part of that work-life balance that i try to say it's like we all have work-life balances like i run the business all day and then i get to go home they inspect all day and then they get to go home whenever i was on my own i was marketing inspecting you know, mm -hmm. books, accounting, like yeah. it was a mess. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I, All I'm, of it. I'm a terrible organizer, you know, ever since Mary came in it fixed, fixed it a whole lot. Yes. I had, I was managing three people running payroll and doing it. Th thank God for our wives. Yeah. Thank you ladies. Yeah, we they, appreciate thank you. Thank you to the wives. Thank you. Thank you, boss lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that being said, um, you know, joining a team, what I like to say, I'm not even trying to market to join, you know, not to try to go and do it on your own. The answer to the question I would say is that you're just, you know, it's, it's two different levels of good. I would say, you know, whenever you're out there on your own, you're inspecting and you know, everything relies on you. Yeah. But whenever you're on a team, you have, you have tools, resources, and people there that can, mm -hmm. that can solve issues or even know something that you don't, you can just text them and be like, boom, you get the answer. Yeah. Yeah, strengths yeah. and weaknesses. Yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. has them, and I always say, "Play to your strengths. Tell me your weaknesses, and I'll take care of that." Nice. So we're coming <laughs> close to the end of the podcast. Uh, do you have anything to say to the community before uh, we head out? Um, I do. First off, trick or treat, uh, and I would say for the trick or treat topic is the uh, we and I we talked about this the other night, but sewer camera videos. Uh, they don't detect leaks, so trick or treat. They don't do. The, they the, they can't tell if something's leaking. So, yeah. oh man, you just opened up a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for other uh, yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah, you know, we were talking about like it's just it's not as you know as home inspectors. Do we actually add the value of sewer scope yeah. cameras? Because I I bought I spent like five grand. Yeah, on it's expensive. Sewer scope cameras. I bought two of them, and I started implementing them into the business. And I started realizing I'm like. I'm actually kind of selling a false product almost like you're only looking at this much or you're yeah. not seeing it, but I'm doing a small sign of the actual, uh, the actual whole value of the home. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's not, it's not that much, but so yeah, the, we, so in fairness, I'm going to tag my little YouTube channel. So yeah. I'm, I'm doing a, a master plumber, Roger Wakefield, Texas green plumbing. He's down here in Houston. He's up there in Dallas. Uh, sits on the Texas State Plumbing Board. So he, him and I just did a podcast to, or a video together in the field and just looking at the camera and everything. You can see he said, Clayton, I'm a master plumber 40 something years. You saw what I just did. We couldn't even, we missed, you know, 30 to 40% of the inside of these pipes. Right. You can't turn that camera and make it go where you want to go. Right. Uh, so what was he recommending? So sewer leak test. Oh, like a, sewer uh, leak. Just the, like if the a foundation. Test. Yeah. So, and that's the other thing. So he sits on the Texas State Plumbing Board and he says, I want you inspectors to stop staying the word hydrostatic. It's oh. a sewer leak test. So what's the difference between hydrostatic and a sewer leak test? Trek has a form that the, list, the sellers have to sign to approve a hydrostatic test, but there's no form that says they have to uh, approve a sewer leak test. And okay. it's the same test. So, oh, so if you say I'm performing a sewer leak test, it uh -huh. we recommend you have cast iron. We recommend that you perform a sewer leak test. And then there's no form. It's just mm -mm. okay. No, nope. it seems like a weird loophole that I still would get the form signed though. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. the the way that Trek verbiage this form, uh, the yeah. seller uh, is basically responsible for any damages caused by any plumber that comes in. Right. Uh, and any seller is like, I'm not signing this. Like, why yeah. would I? Sign yeah, but if this? they say and a sewer, so, yeah. The the thing is, is like I, the the huge misconception of like the hydrostatic test or the sewer leak test is like 
the water pressure is breaking the pipes. And I'm like, yeah. no, 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 that, that's a rumor. Yeah. It is a huge hydro rumor. Greek yeah. water. Yeah. Staticos <laughs> is to stand. Yeah, it's so just standing water. It's just it's, holding. It's not it's just, blowing the pressure. In yeah, the they lines. put a balloon in there and it just blocks it, and then they're not overloading it, nope. and it, they just fill it up and it just sits. Yeah. They're not putting any pressure in there. Nope. And if it goes down, it's leaking. If it doesn't, it's yeah. it's good. It's, yeah, it's a very simple test, but it's you, easy. Yeah, but it it's just a pain. It's, yeah, I think there's labor, and you know, even the reporting involved is intense and repl- removing and replacing toilets is is a pain and, and they're yeah. gonna say and, and that's the real reason that trek yeah. wants you to sign it is because if you do have to pull a toilet okay well now i need to ask the seller's permission yeah. to pull a toilet okay yeah. fair enough i can see that but if you got two clean see in dfw we have two clean outs in front of our houses yeah. houston austin san antonio they they have just the one if it's, you're lu- it's weird if, if you're lucky <laughs> <laughs> if you're yeah. lucky so yeah. we had i don't know clean out started in the 80s where we are i don't know what year they kind of started here nice so cool yeah that's all i have to say and then uh the only thing i want to end with is uh we are working on a new t-shirt line for hiw so uh we're just gonna start Sweet. putting our slogans and stuff on there so if you want to help support the podcast you Merch. can you can purchase one of those in the future it's going to take a second so give me a few weeks but it'll it'll be up there soon awesome nice well thanks again clayton and and i yeah. enjoy i enjoy the podcast Cheers. and the Don Julio. I finally got to try it. You know, awesome. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, one of those uh, the home it's inspection young. marketing things that you kind of get the raw end of the deal on. Three hundred dollars later, you get three hundred dollars later. You get, get a, a taste of the goods. You get the it's taste the of the life. Don Julio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, catch us on the next one. Bye.